very similar type problem as the last one. Uh, once again, I'm going to start with the elapsed time. 415.2 days. The known half-life of this radioisotope is 138.4 days. So, in this instance, there are three half-lives that elapse in that amount of time. And so you're going to start out with what you know. Well, I had two milligrams of this radioisotope, and I want to determine how much is left after three half-lives. After the first half-life, you would have one milligram. After the second, you're going to have half a milligram. And then after the third half-life, quarter of a milligram. In this problem we have an elapsed time of eight hours. And we're aware that the radioisotope has a half-life of two hours. So in this amount of time, four half-lives will occur. Um, you're starting out with 2,000 unstable nuclei. After the first half-life, there would be 1,000 nuclei remaining. After the second half-life, you would have 500 nuclei. After the third, you would have 250 nuclei. And when you divide the fourth time, you end up with 125 nuclei. This problem is slightly different than the other examples we've done. Um, this one actually tells you the final mass. So after the uh, radium has decayed, that there were, uh, let's see, five hundredths of a gram remaining after it had decayed. So we're looking for the original amount. Um, once again we have to find out how many half-lives have passed and so we know the elapsed time is 7.32 days. Uh, we know the half-life is 3.66 days. This is indicative of two half-lives. Okay, And so this time instead of reducing by one half each time we have to kind of work our way backwards. So we're going to double the amount for every half-life. And so, let's see, in the end, we had five hundredths of a gram. Well, if I double that amount, right before that decay, there was a tenth of a gram. And if you double that one more time, you end up with two-tenths of a gram of that material. So once again, instead of having it, because we're trying to find the original mass, you multiply by two. You successively double it twice. So 500 doubled, or excuse me, five hundredths will be a tenth, and then a tenth becomes two-tenths. Okay, in this problem it's a little different. Um, this time we know the initial number of nuclei, and then we know that there are you know, the, the final number of nuclei, and we know the time span in between there. How I would begin this problem, I'd start with what we know. So we know 3,200 nuclei, and I need to see how many times I need to cut this in half before I reach the 200 nuclei at the, at the end time. So if I divide 3,200 by 2, you're going to end up with 1,600. Divide that by 2 again, you get 800. Divide that by 2, you get 400. Divide that by 2, and then finally you reach the 200 nuclei. And so in looking at this, okay, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 half-lives that have passed. And so it took 4 half-lives to go from 3200 nuclei down to 200. Now that we know the number of half-lives, 
we know uh, from the formula we've been using, uh, the time elapsed was eight hours. We don't know the half-life, that we're, that's what we're trying to calculate, and we know in that time span four half-lives have passed. And so to solve this algebraically we're going to cross multiply and divide and so what this rearranges to we're going to have eight hours divided by four half-lives is going to give us the amount of time for one half-life. Eight divided by four answer two hours is the half-life. This problem is very similar to the previous problem. Uh, you know the initial amount, you know the final amount after some time has passed, 12 minutes. It's asking for the half-life in minutes for polonium. So let's start out with the, what we know. We know 16 milligrams. Well, I want to see how many half-lives it takes to get down to 1 milligram. So 16 divided by 2 will give us 8 milligrams. Divided by 2 will give us 4 milligrams. Divided by 2 will give us 2 milligrams. And then finally here we're at the one milligram. And so, once again, it appears that we have experienced four half-lives. Uh, we know the time that has elapsed to be 12 minutes. We don't know the half-life, that's what we're trying to solve, and we know that this is four half-lives. Rearranging, cross-multiplying, dividing, uh, this rearranges to 12 minutes over 4 half-lives. BRX, 12 divided by 4, the answer is 3 minutes. The Big Bang occurred nearly 15 billion years ago. Uh, this was when all matter and energy in the universe was compressed into a tiny, hot space the size of an atom. Then an instant space and time began with a giant expansion. It began to expand. It did not explode. The most compelling piece of evidence to support the Big Bang Theory, uh, Edwin Hubble, discovered that when he looked at distant galaxies with a telescope, he noticed that the galaxies appeared to be moving away from the Milky Way and away from, an, away from each other. Uh, how was he able to tell they were moving away? Uh, that deals with the Doppler effect. As objects are moving away from you, the, the waves that they are producing elongate. So that's what's known as the red shift. So the, the wavelengths of light elongate, they go more towards the red spectrum, and Hubble was able to determine the different galaxies were expanding, spreading out from one another. The following slide will have a graphical representation of uh, really the, the life cycle of a star.